Ephesians chapter 5, we'll look at verses 16 and 17. The Bible says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And then I'll be speaking on the will of the Lord. So we as Christians have a distinct advantage over unbelievers when it comes to facing decisions. Through God's words, we not only know what God has already planned, the way that is best for us, but that it also helps us follow His plan. So Amen. first of all, we need to thank God for the King James Bible that we have. Amen. Thank God we don't have the NIV. Yeah. Thank God we're not using the ESV. Yeah. yeah, RSV and 200 plus Bible translations, but we have the actual words of God in English and also in Korean, so thank God for that. And as Christians, we want to know and understand what the will of the Lord is. So I cannot tell you what the will of the Lord is specifically as what God wants you to be. If maybe God wants some of you to be a preacher, maybe it's God wants you to be missionaries. I don't know. That one is between you and God. But however, there are certain wills of God that are very distinct and directed for us to follow. And we'll look at some of those. Some of those. First, let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And we'll look at one verse. Chapter 2, verse 4. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 says, Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? Mm. Who will? Talking about God. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So first of all, God's will is that for people to get saved. God's will is for people to get saved. So if you are not saved, you are not in the will of God. You could be going to church, you could do many charitable works, but if you are not saved, you are not in the will of God. Yeah. You could also, you could even be a pastor, you could be evangelist, you could be, you could do everything and anything in the name of Jesus Christ. But unless you are in the family, unless you are born again, you are not in the will of God. Amen. So first things first, you need to be saved. Amen. So God wants to glorify Himself through man's deliverance from the condemnation of sin. He wants everybody, everybody to be saved. And you know the doctrine which Calvinists teach, where before the foundation of the world, God chose certain people to get saved and certain people to burn in hell. There's difference between God's foreknowledge and God's choosing certain things to happen. Just because God knows or He knew everything that's going to take place doesn't mean that He directly forced upon people's will for those things to happen. That's right. For example, God or God already knew who would go to heaven and who would burn in hell. But that doesn't mean that He chose particularly for those people to go to heaven and those people to burn in hell. The context which people, or the verse that people use, like Romans chapter 8 verse 29, predestination, they, they take it out of context and make it apply as to adhere to their doctrine, right? There's also a church here close by, Sovereign, um, Sovereign Grace Baptist Church. Just because we're Baptists doesn't mean that we're all the same. Right. Our church is Bible-believing independent Baptists, right. right? We're not Southern Baptists, we're independent. And how do you know whether you're chosen or not? Right? You could, you could receive Jesus Christ, but how do you know? Maybe God just chose you to burn in hell. Then all the receiving Jesus Christ, all the repenting, all the confession to get saved will not help you. So what does it amount to? It amounts to works. That's how you know that you're saved or not, according to the theology of Calvin. That's right. But we know that God, 
died not only for the elect, right, supposedly, but he died for all. He died for you and I. And praise the Lord for that. Amen. So the question is, are you safe? For those who are watching uh, through YouTube or the internet, you must get saved. If you aren't sure you're saved, then probably not. Right? And if you say that, I got saved when I got baptized, I got saved by doing many good work, or I saw Jesus Christ, or I saw the angel, right, speaking to me, then you are not saved. Okay, I'll, I won't risk it. I'll try to reach out to you uh, for you to get saved. And if you remember last week what I touched upon, every single person has a responsibility, like the ants. Ants know their roles. The soldier ants, they protect. And the worker ants, they work hard to get the sweets from the soda, sweets from the cookies that you <laughs> leave over on the table, right? And as we Christians are concerned, we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're ambassadors. So are you a good ambassador or are you a bad ambassador? So are you representing the Lord Jesus Christ or are you representing yourself and the flesh of the world? It's either or. It's very important. So what does the Bible say of a Christian or a person who leads someone unto him? That that person is wise. Do you want to be a wise person in the sight of the Lord? Then reach out to people, talk to them about Jesus Christ. It is good to give them tracts. Don't get me wrong, I'm not minimizing. It's awesome. Like the testimony that Brother Todd gave, it's awesome to hear those things. It encourages the brethren. But you can't stop there. As well, Brother Todd tried to also talk to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that could go far away. And then D.L. Moody, one of the great evangelists, once said, Every man and woman who loves the Lord Jesus Christ must wake up to the fact that he or she has a mission in the world in his work of reaching the lost. Mm -hmm. So God might not call you to be an evangelist or missionary, but however, God has called each and every person to preach the word. Yeah. For ladies, not preaching in front of the, behind the pulpit, but talking about Jesus Christ. The Bible also mentioned a conversation. The life that you live has, has an impact on the people surrounding you. Such as well, our pastor, the way he... Uh, goes about his business. He never complained of the illness that he had in front of us. Maybe he has his moments, but he doesn't really reveal that in front of us, right? And by looking at him, he's a great role model. He's a great role model that we should follow, right? Not only he's the man of God, but he's the person who really cares for us, and we need to pray for him, and we need to support him all the way, right? So our testimony is very important, testimony. And one of the preachers mentioned, you might be the only Bible that any person might read. Amen. What does that mean? Your testimony is so important. The person next to you might not be saved, well, in front of you, behind you, underneath you, above you. But there is someone definitely who is not saving you around your life. Maybe it's your family. And then they've been looking at you day in and day out. And then they want to see, you, you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Then they want to see some kind of fruit. And it is reasonable for the unsaved people, or even the saved people, to expect something out of you as a Christian. Right? It might be fair, it might be not fair. The world standard of Christian is super high. Right? But irregardless, that tells you one thing. They know one thing, that Jesus Christ was pure, that Jesus Christ was not like them, that his standard is really high. So that's why people say, oh, I'm not going to, I don't go to church because of hypocrites in the church. What does it tell you? That the people that, uh, that the Christian, the people, the person that Christians are supposed to serve, right, is perfect. So they should be perfect. So they have the mentality, whether it's, uh, whether it's fair or not, they have the mentality that Christians need to be perfect. But these days, 
Standards are so low, right? <laughs> People don't even know the Bible. Pastor Tribe mentioned, and uh, senior pastor Tribe probably knows as well, and then he'll agree that the average preacher, they might not know more than five verses verbatim. But young people here, they know 10, 20, 30, maybe 50 verses just going to the streets and just memorizing the witnessing verses. So it is a shame. It is a shame for to see like Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormon. We harp on them. And then Brother Lee, he does a great, great job in <laughs> witnessing to them. But how about the rest of us? What are we doing? Right? We love it. Coming to church, being encouraged, hearing the good preaching. But that's not all that's not everything uh, to Christian life. It is about people. Like William Booth went at his deathbed. You know, some of the things, the profound things can be learned from the last set of words or the last things that people would say in their deathbed. William Booth basically said others. That's all he said, others. That was his approach, right? That was his approach. Why? Because people, people are dying and people are going to hell. That is why it is important for us to reach out to the lost souls. And what was the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ? He had different missions, but one of the missions, praise the Lord, is that he came to seek and to uh, seek the seek the lost, right? So John 20, verse 21 says, As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. Right? Send I you. So you might not be one of the original 12 disciples or the 70 or others, but Devotion is speaking, are you a disciple of Christ? Are you a follower? Or are you a Christian? Right? Christian. Little Christ. So, are you living the life of trying to reach other people unto the Lord? And one of the scary things is, in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 8 says, When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, Thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak toward the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will lie required at thine hand. That's a, that's a scary verse. That's a scary verse. So your careers are important. I'm not saying those, are, those things are not important. Your job, your family, those things are very important. You need to take care of your family. Right? You need to do everything that you possibly can. If you're a student, then you need to study hard for the Lord Jesus Christ. But never forget the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to, to save those who are lost. Right? And your mission as the Lord Jesus Christ is to represent Him. How? By living a clean life and to reach others unto Him. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, point one was God wants everyone to be saved. And then now, let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This is another direct will of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 3. For this is the will of God. Will of God. Even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication. So we're definitely living in a sick and perverse world, right? And then we see those... I always have trouble because, because they always add another letter to their <laughs> moniker or whatever they are. Yeah. L B. GTS, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm, kidding. I'm kind of losing count. So from, we could just say A to Z, whatever they want to uh, mention or whatever they want to apply to themselves. But according to the Bible, simple word, that's sin. You're living a life of sin. So you need to repent, confess, and get right. So Thessalonians, right? We read in Thessalonians right there. It wasn't written only for the Thessalonians, but for us as well. But for us as well. It isn't just the unsaved people that needs to watch out for fornication or sexual perversions. It's for 
same people as well, right? And you guys, those of you who know Brother Grande, he preached hard about this, and it's true. Uh, the internet came out, I think, the early, the, I think, in the 80s, but it was really gotten, got off uh, on its feet on uh, early 90s. And then from that on, technology information just readily available. It used to be just available on the computers, but now on the cell phones, mm -hmm. right? And the problem is ads, ads. You could just go to a, like a PG website, but all of a sudden they might show rated R images, right? That's why you must guard your eyes. That's what David David uh, said in the Book of Psalms. So don't think it was only for the Thessalonians or the time of Romans that involved idolatry and sins of the flesh or sins of Im immorality. So you need to really watch out for your the. Not too much TV these days, people don't really watch TV, but people, the laptop, computer, social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all those things, right? And it used to be where the ladies would cover themselves, right? But as time passed by, as every decade passed by, right, it's like the like the long sleeve shirt would get shorter and shorter and shorter, and especially the dress would get shorter and shorter and shorter, right? So it's not really a dress, it's like a skirt, right? And then it's like a swimsuit, right? Kind of. And then also, there's also kind of a joke that the, that person or that lady is wearing her, her jeans are so tight that you could see the thigh that is in the pocket, right? Like those. <laughs> and it is unfortunate, and one of the statistics, uh, recent statistics, uh, there was a survey that, that was done in high school and college, I don't know where, but astoundingly, more than 50 to 60% of high school students and between 70 to 75% of college students committed, I call it, the sin of fornication, right? Basically, sex before marriage. 50 to 60 percent of high school students and 70 to 75. It used to be where like those things as uh, Pastor Castro had mentioned could have been just done in the alley or outside, right? But now it's open wide and public school te go teaching the sex education when I was in the elementary, I think it was like sixth grade or something. And then we had parents Parents who basically discourage, I don't want my kid to be in that class. But now, they're shoving that in into the kindergartners now. So I feel bad for, mm -hmm. for the young, young people here. And then when you say that, I'm clean, especially ladies, I'm clean. And the men say, I'm clean, right? That relationship is going to only happen after I get married. Then your peers laugh at you, right? It's a sick world we're living in. Sick world that we're living in. That's what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's the world that we're living in. And we, we know what the Bible said. The Bible prophesies of all these things, right? The days of Laodicea, Laodicea, the people's right. And therefore, everything's about people's right. It's all about people's feelings, right? I don't want to be cruel, but I don't really care about your feelings as far as the Word of God is concerned. If the Bible says this, then I don't care what you about your feelings. And there's a supposed church going or Christian uh, politician or politician that wants to be the president, right? The mayor of Indiana. And then he goes against our against our vice president and then he talks bad about him, like what Christ taught was love, love, love and love and love. And then our vice president you know, all the doctrines and all the things might not be alive, but at least it's a safe Christian that, as far as I know. And then he tries to be 
he tries to live a clean life, and people make fun of that. And this so-called Saruman, I say, yeah. the mayor, yeah. right? Some of you might not like that term, but that's what the Bible says. He's wrong. He's wrong. And that you shouldn't listen to any <clears throat> advice that he's saying as far as how to live, live life, a clean, godly life. And he needs to repent. He needs to get saved. So for you young people, I understand, right? The hormones are raging. <laughs> And then the peers and the K-pop, not only not only among Koreans but also among among Hispanics and 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 the other ethnic groups, right? I see I see people listening to K-pop. They don't understand anything that they're saying, but they just like the beats and all that. Right, and the videos, right? But it used to be MTV, right? But not necessarily. Now it's K-pop. K-pop, and then the BTS, I think, I found out what that stands for, burn the stage, but one of the stage, those guys were burning in hell, you know? Yeah, and the Bible mentions, so for those of you who are not married, those of you who are single, I'll give you some advice, directly from the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, says, It is good for a man not to touch a woman. That's what the Bible says. Bible also says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, flee also useful lust. Mm -hmm. you, might, you might seem all godly, dressed right in the church, right? But how are you outside? God knows. God knows. That's the only thing that matters, that God knows. And you'll give an account of yourself to God for that. And for you ladies, very important, purity is... Very important. And Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Mm -hmm. Do you consider, your, consider yourself as a virtuous woman? If you say that you do, then you might be a proper person. But how about their spouse or your uh, family member? Can they say that about you? <coughs> so this is one of the things that you need to realize. You cannot defeat the devil. Certain temptation you cannot win. I just be upfront. Jesus Christ is in you. We understand that, and he can he can overcome anything and everything. How do we know? Because he overcame death, right? However, the problem is that we still have flesh. That is our problem. That is our problem. We could yeah. we have Jesus Christ, but we also have the flesh and the world and the devil attacking us, right? Yeah, come on. So consider Joseph. You know Joseph, right? In the Old Testament. He had a he pretty much had a spotless testimony. Right? If there was a person who could defeat any temptation, it probably was Joseph. But when Potiphar's wife was keep on nagging at him and approaching him to have a more relationship with him, what did he do? Did he just sit next to her or did he say Hey, sister, well, let's read the Bible together and see what the Bible says about your, your uh, temptation or your uh, reasoning, right? Your approach to me. So, so they say, God did this and that, or Jesus Christ died for you. No, no, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. What did he do? When she was keep on approaching, she was approaching him, what did he do? He fled. He ran. He ran. He ran. He, he, was a, he didn't get on his knee and praying. He, he ran, and I'll just add in. I think he was praying while he was running away, <laughs> right? So certain times with temptations of the flesh, the world, and the devil, what you got to do is just put everything down and just, just run away. So a practical example would be this. Internet. So you're, you're, you are with your friends and doing a project, and then... One of your so-called friends, they're not your friends, if they say this. If they lead you into unrighteousness, they're not your friends. Okay, so it's either you get on a track and then you try to do the Jesus Christ, or you just leave, right? Why? Because, as I said, you have your flesh, and you're not, you're not strong enough to overcome all the temptations, right? If they continue to say, oh, let's, let's go to the movies and watch this, or, let's go to this website and then let's watch this wicked stuff. 
you are going to yield into this temptation, right? As the song says, you are not, but you will. In those circumstances, what are you going to do? You're going to say, the Bible says you're going to preach at them? <laughs> you could, but the wise thing for you to do is just give an excuse or you got, I'm a Christian, so I can't not be in this kind of situation. Please understand me and just leave. And when you do that, one or two things. They'll just laugh at you or it's going to ruin their day. <laughs> so the, when they try to click the website, they'll be like, I can't do it. So on the one example, uh, it's not related to this, but testimony was after I got saved, I was real, really zealous for the Lord. Right? I tried to reach to my friends and some, some it could have been in the flesh or whatnot. I basically one time, the first person I led to Jesus Christ, kind of in the flesh, but it wasn't normal. I remember the, I remember the young person. I was, I kind of pushed them into getting, uh, into, uh, from the beginning to the end. You need to get saved. You, you need to get saved. You're going to burn in hell. And they was like, I don't know. <laughs> you better get saved right now if you want. You might get hit by a car and you might die and go to hell. <laughs> right? That. But, you know, God had to teach me to have patience and that it's not just, you know, from the sinner to salvation at one moment. You got to plant the seed and then when God is ready, then God will work in his or her heart for the increase to happen. But anyways, one time what happened was, one of my friends, I was able to lead to Jesus Christ. And time passed by, and then I was able to, you know, hang out with them, hang out with him, and then my other friend uh, before. So long, st uh, so long story short, what happened was, my friend, he was smoking, right? He was smoking, I think he was in the 10th grade or whatever. But my other friend, well, he wasn't saved. But he's the one who got into smoke again. And then I showed up, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then my friend he knew how what kind of testimony I kind of had, or I tried to, and then he said, he told my other friend because we were pretty close. He said, uh, "Let's not, let's not do it. I just can't do it in front of him. <laughs> I just can't do it." And then he basically, and then my other friend said, "Oh, what's what's going on?" Right, and then kind of told my story, my situation, uh, and then was like, understood. And then even though he didn't get saved at that moment, didn't didn't smoke. But what what happened was that you know I wasn't able to lead him all the way. But one day, uh, in LA street preaching, um, he the my friend that wasn't saved, he came by, and then they saw him, and he he had his girlfriend, and then my brother was able to lead. Him to Jesus Christ. So how did that happen? Was it me? No, it was Jesus Christ. But one thing I knew was that as a Christian, you have to try to live a spotless life. There's no, uh, I don't want to say option. That kind of makes it sound like Calvinist. But anyways, you do have a free will, but you should, you right. should That's right. live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Your testimony is so important. Everything that you say, everything that you do, someone, someone's watching you. Someone's watching you. Right? Someone's watching you. So be careful. Be careful. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. I remember when I was going to school in Pensacola, PBI, I thought everybody was holy. And many of the brethren <laughs> were, were holy, I would say. But they would tell me some stories of preachers, preachers, lived holy, preached hard. But that's what the Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. And then what happened was that sin got manifested somehow. And what was that sin? One preacher I, I heard of preached hard, a very awesome dynamic preacher. But with a pianist, he had a relationship. And then... The church split, and the church couldn't recover. And there's another preacher. He he was excellent at planting churches. Planting churches. He would plant church, and then he was like a kind of a mission work in America. We say plant church, and then he would continue. But however, he was also found that that found out that he also had the 
wrong relationship. And then what happened? Yeah, the churches that he, was plant, he planted, a lot of people left, right? There are certain sins that the church had, will be able to, uh, won't be able to get up fully, right? We won't be able to recover. And one of the sins is sin of fornication, adultery. Those sins, very difficult for the church to recover, as opposed to lying or other sins. Don't get me wrong, in the, in the sight of God, sin is a sin. However, in the sight of, sight of people, there are certain sins that are greater than others, and that's one of the sins. That's why young people, be careful. And then for people who are married, be careful. For everybody, just be careful. In this, it teaches, uh, in this society where suing is so simple and easy and where all this fake stuff is going on, you really have to keep yourself spotless as best as you can. And then number three, this is a big one. Uh, first, that's only in chapter five. Let's look at first, that's only in chapter five. Verse 18. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. The Bible says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything means good and the bad. Good and the bad. You already know people around you. Even in this room, the things that they are going through the things, the things that they had to go through, and maybe the things that they will go through, right? For example, our pastor, he is going through health issues. So be thankful for the good health that you have. Amen. Be thankful even for the not good health that you have. Why? It could always be worse. Yeah. Uh, because I see patients all the time and then I get to hear their stories and I feel for them I feel for them and then that it makes me it forces me to be humble and also uh, helps me to pray for especially for the saints who are not going through good health health is very important Health is very important because you want to be able to communicate with people and, ha and be able to converse with people and have fellowship with people. But when you're bad with it, it will be difficult. People will be able to visit you, but you won't be able to get up and visit them, right? Health, salvation. I just thank God for salvation. It is amazing. Amen. Biblical salvation and the doctrine of eternal security is unbelievable. Amen. Yeah. Think about it. Are you living a more pure or holy life than compared to people living in the days of Billy Sunday or George Whitfield, Jonathan Edwards, who are not saved? Compare. People in those days, they even though they did not get saved, they knew in front of Christians not to say the curse words, they knew how they, would, they were to uh, act. However, Christians these days, maybe you, even among Christians, you don't really care. You don't really care that Jesus Christ is in you. Or you know that Jesus Christ is in you, but you just live contrary to the Word of God. Yeah. And you say the bad words, and you say the dirty jokes over and over, and you don't really care, right? And you better thank God for His mercy that He doesn't strike you down <laughs> at every moment that He has, right? So, if I had to choose between grace and mercy, I'll always choose mercy. <laughs> because I know who I am. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I always disappoint Him. And during the preaching, my mind might be wondering as well, or thinking about, you know, what I have to do, my, about, you know, I have to think about patience, charting, billing, and all this stuff during the preaching. Yeah, it does happen. Yeah, you, maybe you're better than I am, but you know, but at least I'm truthful about it. But we're always sinning. We're always sinning, right? So thank God for that. He doesn't strike you down every single moment. Old Testament time, people people always had the rock, 
meaning a hot rock, we could say it's the Bible, that people literally had the rock next to them. Why? To get ready to stone the person next to them. Right? Because people always come and sin. And it's just wonderful how Jesus Christ, what did he see in us, right? What did he see in us? Just sin. Just perversion. No good thing. But in spite of that unconditional love, he came down and died for us, right? That is why the salvation and eternal security trumps the worst thing that you might go through or any worst thing that you ever think of, right? Abortion, Pastor Kashrai preached about abortion, I mean, talked about abortion and miscarriage, some, some tragedies happening. And one of the biggest ones, death. You, our church, we have unfortunate cases of people um, dying and being with the Lord. At least they don't have to suffer anymore. And then thank God that we'll be with them. And then they'll recognize us and we'll recognize them in a perfect body like the Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever things you are going through, I know it's difficult, but you got to be thankful. It could always be worse. And one of the things... One of the things that people have problem with is regrets, right? You have regrets. Only you, you would say this. What if I could go back and change certain things? But my question to you is, whatever the tragedy, divorce, death, or whatever those things, you reverse that. Are you sure that everything else after that will get better? You could get worse. Say that you had... Uh, maybe a death, right? Death of a loved one. Say that you were able to reverse that somehow. How do you know that person is not going to die that following day or whatnot? So that's one of, the, one of the things you need to do is go forward. Like Apostle Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, right? And pressing forward. God always press, must always press forward. And one of the cures for pride, or you're a powerful person, right? You might not have to display it in words, but if you are a proper person, the cure for that is gratitude, being thankful. That will put your pride in its place. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20 says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If there ever was a person who could have complained with merit, that person would be the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He could have said, forget this, these people, yeah. I came to, I, I healed them, I fed them, and they're still going against me. They're still doubting me. They still want to kill me. And Jesus Christ said, okay, forget, I'll just destroy the world and pretend none of these things happen. But did he do that? No, he didn't. He overlooked all our flaws. And future flaws, thank the Lord for that, future yeah. flaws. Yes. And he disregarded everything and died on the cross for you. Not only that, let's turn to Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. If you get discouraged, this is one of the great chapters. Great chapters to read. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. All understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, he didn't have to, he don't have to, he doesn't have to do anything for us. He doesn't have to. <clears throat> does he care for you right now? Does he? He doesn't have to. But it's his love, infinite love, that his love from Calvary will extend throughout all eternity. And you will enjoy that, right? So you might go through all these hard hardships, all these hardships. And maybe some of, no one in here might be going through what you're going through. But there is someone who is going through something that is not safe and worse than you, right? 
what does the Bible say to be content with? Two things, right? If you have these two things, you should be, you should be satisfied with life. And one of those two things, food and raiment. Bible doesn't say money. Bible doesn't say roof over your head, right? Food and raiment. But what does what did God give you? All things, all of them, especially in the United States, right? So consider, introspect, consider, consider, consider. And the last one, First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. Verse seventeen. First Peter chapter three, verse seventeen. Mm-hmm. For it is better if the will of God be so. What is the will of God? That he suffer for well doing than for evil doing. Are you going to suffer? Yeah. What's the reason? Why do everybody say the law suffer? One word, why? Because of sin, right? You are going to suffer. You are going to suffer. But when you suffer, suffer because you are doing something for the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't suffer because of your stupidity or your foolish or your foolish deeds. For example, you're in the hospital. Why are you in the hospital? You're driving driving 80 miles in a 30 mile zone? Or are you in the hospital because someone threw a brick brick at your back while you're preaching on the streets, right? Suffer for well doing. Pastor Try, he is he he is suffering for well doing, right? I can't really find fault with Pastor Try to tell the truth, but he he's one of those people who suffer for well doing, preaching, preaching, always preparing, and always taking uh, caring for the brethren, and always uh, when he has time visiting the saints. So God's will is for you to suffer for well doing. So when you get chastised. <clears throat> For doing something wrong, don't say that's the will of God. It's due to your stupidity. That's why you're getting punished, right? But we're talking about missionaries, evangelists, preachers who have to go through such hard times. For example, I could um, mission missionary Jeff Brigham, who is support in Japan for for 10, 15 years, no members in the church, pretty much. Except for maybe there are people uh, in the military in Japan that might just visit him here and there, but for but the native Japanese people, zero. But you know, uh, brother Yun who came by, being able to witness and then estimate about twenty five thousand people responding to the gospel last year, that was incredible. So people of Philippines, their hearts hearts open as opposed to Japan. But, so you could just see, and then also the health issue of Brother, Brother Brigham and the wife and all that, but still faithful till now. Continue to witness, continue to preach. Why? Because God called him into the ministry, right? And then we are, what are we? We are soldiers of Jesus Christ. Your soldier, in good times and bad times, but especially when bad times come, that's when people can, that's when family members and people around you could determine what kind of person you are, right? Very important. First Peter 4, 19 said, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. You are in God's hands. Just remember that. 1 Peter 2.21 says, For even here unto were he called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that he should follow his steps. You don't have to go out searching for, sorry, searching to suffer for the, for the name of Jesus Christ. You will come. Mm-hmm. Yes. All they that live God in Christ Jesus, yes. right, So suffer persecution. Not necessarily in America, because I don't ridicule, Mockery, but that's pretty much it. 
if you want to see persecution, Middle East, mm -hmm. right, and certain portions of uh, Asia, mm -hmm. like China, China, there's persecution in the churches. Whether it's Bible believing church or not, there's, there's real persecution. That's why there are churches that are having service underground now in China. Okay? But how about us? I mean, we don't have to worry about any of those persecutions, but we should always be vigilant, right? Because we never know what might happen. But however, as long as God is with us and God continues to open the doors, then you just gotta participate and do what God wants you to do, whatever that might be. And you know, Jesus Christ, Isaiah 53, this great chapter of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, <coughs> it's all about his suffering. And Apostle Paul, in 2 Corinthians 11, you could read all the things that he had to go through, shipwreck, <coughs> getting bitten, getting betrayed, <coughs> suffering hunger, all those things, all those things. But still, he came out, he came out all right, you would say. At the end, he finished the fight. He finished. He finished the race. And once again, we gotta all go back to testimony. Testimony is so important. Testimony. When bad things are happening, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna look down or look up? There was a prisoner, I remember. Uh, I think Harold and Popov and Richard Wombra, Wombra, those people, those saints of God had to go through hard stuff in the Romania and um, in that area. And one of the one of the things was they didn't let you, they didn't let you go outside. They didn't. There was no window or anything. The reason why was if exposure to sky uh, displayed hope. So what they did was block off everything. You can't go outside and you can't, you just have to stay in the room, right? In the total darkness. They had to suffer all those things. And obviously bitterness came in, but who can blame them? I can't blame them. But at the end, they just became great encouragers, especially for Christians who are suffering, right? And then also kind of rebuke and for Christians as well and whatever you're going through there's a reason why and one of the reasons why you're going through that because first of all you can handle it and second of all so you could encourage other Christians mm -hmm. if everything's all rosy and dandy and everything's good how are you able to reach reach out to people people will say what do you know right and when, if Jesus Christ didn't come down for heaven to earth, then people had a legit excuse. What do you know, God? You never, you, you never came, you don't know what we're going through. You don't know what it's like to be tempted to come and say, you don't know what it's, what it's to hunger. You don't know what it's to be betrayed and everything. So in you know, order for God to stop all the excuses, what did he do? He came down for heaven to earth. And now, and then that's when he, learn something new, we will say. Ah, so this is what it meant, what, what they were going through, what the human race was going through. So what did Jesus Christ do? He died for all those sins and all those sufferings. Any suffering, he nailed all those things to a cross. So once you come to Jesus Christ, after life, you'll never ever see that ever again. So he died for, every, for, for sins and all the consequences of sin. And there are more wills of God, but those are the four that I want to, to speak to you about. So, are you doing those things? Those four things, right? And there are others. But the, but the thing is, simply, what's your relationship with Jesus Christ? All these things are possible if you have the right relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to always search for oh, what's God's will for my life, teacher or any other careers or who doesn't want to be married and all those things before all those before those things come, figure out what the Bible says and do those things first. And then God will lead you more and more into the path of righteousness.